So I need to apologize in advance because I've got a lot of ground I want to cover today. So sorry. Uh, but uh, if it, so if it feels like I'm pushing past things, it's because I'm trying to cover a lot of ground and make sure we have some time with the euro rack at the end, okay? Uh, I feel like I left off some things on Wednesday that I want to make sure I don't breeze too far past. Um, and I want to make sure that next week we can get to sampling. That's the theme for next week, sampling, live looping, that sort of stuff, okay? So uh, that's my reason for getting some things in front of you today. Uh, grading updates. I am up to date on the grading on Blackboard with the exception of today's reading response. Okay, so if you're curious where you stand in the class, uh, especially with regards to absences and tardies and that sort of stuff, which have started to accumulate for many of you, um, you can see the effect that that's having on your grade. There's a column there that's ATEC, which is absences, tardies, and extra credit, all totaled up in one category. Uh, I've added the comments uh, in the comments section you can actually see which dates you were absent if you uh, need records of that basically because I, I do again keep track of that stuff um, but I, I feel like because of what I'm seeing in the total in that category for some people I need to do something there I'm not quite sure what that something is yet okay so stay tuned on that front I want a little bit more time to think about that because some of you uh, those are those are those are adding up quickly, basically. Uh, it, the let's see. The thing I'll say is that if you have an absence in the last week, the the policy is that you have one week to make up an absence. Okay, so those recordings are online. Uh, everything through Wednesday's online. I'm recording today right now, basically. So the process is to watch the recording, to then write me a, a reaction response that's 300 words long and email it to me. Okay, so if you've got an absence within the last week, uh, feel free to follow up on that. Okay. Uh, but look for an update on, on that uh, coming up. Okay, so I thought I'd hit you with the math right away. Okay, so let's start with that. Okay, um, you remember from last time, yes, when we were talking about the math, we I talked about inputs versus outputs, and I talked about x versus y, correct? Okay, uh, x means an input, y means an output, and n is digital speak for any sample in the chain, right? Okay, so this formula basically means input is equal to output, okay? Um, in delays, I, I kind of mentioned this, right, but in delay, when we're dealing with filters, we're dealing with one sample delays, okay? Obviously, this week, we've moved into longer delays, more samples, okay? Uh, and so the expression in mathematically is that you use uh, a subtraction delay, okay? The, the number that you see after the subtraction sign here in this formula is the number of samples that it's being delayed, okay? Um, that's what is going on here in terms of the mathematical expression for these uh, delays, okay? Um, now, we can mix these signals, so this is not anything different than what I was doing last, uh, last Wednesday, right? We can actually mix an undelayed signal with a delayed signal, okay? So this XN is an undelayed input, but then we're mixing it with a one sample delayed input, okay? Because it's an X, it's a delayed input, and then we're multiplying it by some coefficient a, okay? Um, this is a feed forward delay, okay? So when you hear someone's, you, you may have, you've obviously heard of feed back, right? And hopefully in the reading, you may have picked up on this feed forward. Feed forward is when you take the input and delay it to mi and mix it with the output, uh, mix it with the, another copy of the input in order to create the output, okay? That's what feed forward is, okay? Um, Feedback is when we mix some form of the output into the signal, okay? So where am I going with this? Well, there's a reason why I was using those silly little clicks on Wednesday, okay? It's because when you are building filters, when you are building delays, one way that you can test for the integrity of your filter or your delay is by giving it a unit impulse, okay? One sample of maximum energy followed by infinite number of samples of zero, okay? That's what this slide is basically explaining, okay? Uh, the, the, this is what's known as a delta function or sometimes a Dirac function, but it, uh, if you want to think of it as just a unit impulse, okay? What it is is one sample of maximum energy followed by samples of no energy, okay? That's what this says. It says if, if that's all this is basically saying. If n equals zero, then it's one. If it doesn't equal zero, then the energy should be zero, okay? Makes sense? Using this function, you can test your filters to find out if they're functioning right, okay? 
So that's one of the reasons why I was introducing that sound to you, okay? We can figure out what a, sam what a filter, what a delay is going to do and actually test it, okay? So in a feed forward delay situation, okay, where we've got uh, an, an even mix between the undelayed signal and the one sample delayed signal, okay, and we're mixing them 50-50, that's what the point, see how we're multiplying by 0.5 and 0.5, okay? <coughs> we're basically doing a 50-50 mix between the undelayed input and a delayed input, okay? We can actually feed in the unit impulse, that's the input side of this, this slide, and figure and record the output side, and we know we basically know whether our, our, our feed forward delay is working properly at that point. Okay? Makes sense? Okay? That's this is all I want to get in front of you here, okay? When we change the sign, okay, all I did was change this sign here in between the two, okay? All of a sudden, we go from a unipolar output to a bipolar output. So the, out, the output actually now starts flipping back and forth, and you get, you get, I don't know, uh, some more interesting flavor here, right, coming in your output. Because now you've got negative samples mixing with positive samples on the output side, uh, and you get a more irregular output, okay? Uh, it does different things to the signal, okay? If we start to do feedback, Right? Okay. Everybody should you should see that I've changed this X here to now it being a Y. Okay. So I'm no longer doing a delayed copy of the input. I'm doing a delayed copy of the output. The output is feeding back into the formula. Okay. Through a one sample delay. Okay. Now all of a sudden I go from one sample of 0.5 and then a, a second sample of negative 0.5 and then I'm at zero and I'm at rest in <coughs> infinity. Right? Okay. Um, I go from that to, well, now I go from 0.5 to 0.25 to what's half of 0 0.25? 0 0.125, and then half of that is 0 0.0625, and half of that is 0 0.03125, okay? Because we're feeding back now, we, it keeps going half, and then half, and then half, and then half, and theoretically, right, what should happen? Should, will we ever hit zero, theoretically, if we just keep halving it, right? Okay, so technically in a feedback situation, and this is why feedback gets to be dangerous, right? The response is infinite, okay? And so filters, one way that we can categorize filters is whether they have a finite impulse response or an infinite impulse response, okay? Feedback leads to infinite impulse responses, okay? So you may have seen that terminology somewhere in the reading, hopefully. If not, I'm introducing it today. One gross distinction in terms of filters and their output is whether it produces a finite impulse response or an infinite impulse response, okay? And feedback is one characteristic that does that, that creates this infinite impulse response, okay? Which we can do all sorts of interesting sound design things with, okay? Uh, with me so far? Okay. Changing the sign does the same thing on an infinite impulse response. It's, you start to get this positive and negative, this bipolar output, okay? So you can think of this coefficient here, what we're multiplying. <coughs> I'm making this subtraction, but that, right, you, you, you know from 7th or 8th grade algebra, right, that it's the same thing uh, adding a negative number as subtracting a, that, that same positive number, right? Right? A plus B is the same thing as, or excuse me, A minus B is the same thing as A plus negative B, right? Okay, that's effectively what we're doing here, okay? So having a negative coefficient multiplying by a negative value on your feedback can alter the output because it creates this bipolar signal which alters the overall timbral output, okay? So know that both positive and negative numbers can be used to scale your feedback, okay? Uh, let's see. So, key things I want to get across here basically with the math, that the math helps me show, is this, this difference between an infinite or a finite impulse response, okay? Uh, you may see this abbreviated as an FIR filter or an IIR filter, okay? You may encounter that. Uh, the other thing is that th what I've showed you here, this is for what are called time invariant filters, okay? Just unpack that word, time invariant. What do you, what do you think that means? 
You know what time is. So let's unpack invariant. What does the prefix in mean? Not. Okay. Variant, what does that sound like? Ver yeah, like variant like variable, right? So it's time invariant. It's not changing over time, okay? Time invariant is kind of the opposite of modulation, okay? Everything I did on Wednesday, those were time invariant filters, right? We were setting it, and then it was just going, right? Okay? Things start to change when we add modulation into the mix, okay? Modulation is what produces things like chorus and flange, okay? So we, we go from comb filters being static, producing those kind of alleyway type effects that we were talking about, to then modulating the delay time, which produces these chorus and flanging. Because think about it, we don't typically go into an alleyway where the walls are moving back and forth like this, yes? Okay? <laughs> That's not our typical experience, unless you're on some sort of hallucinogenic pharmaceutical, yes? Okay? Um, or some crazy funhouse situation. I don't know what. I, I'm trying to think of places where the walls would move. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, but in comb filtering and flanging, part of the reason they sound so weird and otherworldly, basically, is you're creating situations where effectively these hard surfaces are creating echoes and they're moving, they're modulating over time. Okay. Um, so on that note, okay, reviewing what we did Wednesday and where I want to get to the extension in the patch that I've got in front of you that's on Blackboard, okay, we talked about these zones, right, where frequency in and then there's ambiguity between 5 and 50 and then we get to really where we can hear discrete echoes, okay. Um, I've already explained the relationship between comb and flange and chorus, okay. Uh, let's see what happens when we do modulation. So if you've got this patch up in front of you, okay, you should see that I've added, and I need to probably increase the size of mine so you guys can see it in the back maybe. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, what I've done here, you, you hopefully notice that I've got two uh, additional sub patches here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the comb filter plus and drop it in between my click and my summation here. Okay. So if you just do that and turn on the patch. Okay, you can double, you can lock the patch again and just double click the sub patch to get at the interface. So, because this is what I want to show you guys. Okay, okay, we ended here, right, with the comb filter. What I've done now is add in a spectroscope. Okay, so we can actually see what's coming out of the comb filter. Because did anybody, uh, I, I, we kept calling it a comb filter, we kept talking about it as a comb filter. Did anybody wonder why it's called a comb filter? You, you wondered, okay. <laughs> Did anybody get an answer for why it's called the comb filter? Probably going to have lots of peaks and valleys. Lots of peaks and valleys, yeah. It, the frequency response of this filter looks kind of like a comb, okay. If you can think about the teeth of a comb, right. So if I take my delay time, I've got some notes here, okay. If we take my delay time and I turn it up to about, what have I got? I got four milliseconds, okay. I've got my domain set to 0 to 5,000, and I'm going to turn up the direct sound all the way, and I'm going to turn up my feed forward to about 0.82, okay? It's got to be pretty high. And uh, I, just like yesterday, I've got this connected to the <coughs> space bar, so if I hit space bar uh, and turn up my sound, where'd my sound go? Okay, no. Uh... Oh, I'm at 11, that's why. Let me turn this down to... See those peaks that are popping up on the screen there really quickly? Okay, that's the comb shape. That's the what it is named for, okay? <clears throat> if I take my feed forward and I now turn it to negative values because I can have a negative coefficient on my feedback, or my... Uh, okay? So that's feed forward. Feed forward actually produces sharp valleys, okay? It's harder to hear the feed forward, okay? So go ahead and turn the feed forward. I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys there, okay? Turn the feed forward to about zero, and now take the feed back and turn it up to 0.8 or higher. 
Everybody see those peaks? Okay. And the pitchy quality, the pitchiness of it is that repetition, uh, that repetitive pattern of those peaks in the frequency spectrum. Okay. So I wanted to kind of highlight the shape here of the, the comb filter. Um, the way I always remember it, because uh, uh, the feed forward produces sharp valleys, the feed back produces sharp peaks. The way I remember it is that your feed forward, I do this, I, I, you always see me doing this with my hand because I can never remember. Feed forward, feed back. <laughs> okay. Solomon, you had a question? Uh, the, uh, delay time of five, you can really see the graphical portion of it a lot better. Yeah, let's see here. Five. Yeah. Okay, so I, I introduced this so you can actually see those peaks. Okay, so now this is a time invariant comb filter. We're not changing anything. Okay, so I, I promised you ver modulation, right? So let's pull this aside. Let's delete this. You notice this second one here is for uh, um, it says mod comb filter. We drop that in between your click. And then just double click on this so you can see it. Okay, what I've done here, just so you understand what's going on, okay, all I've changed is instead of sending in a static delay time, I now have a cycle which does what? What does that produce? What's, the, what's that wave shape called that it produces? Sine wave, okay. Uh, so I've got a speed in hertz. That's how fast it's going. But then I also am feeding it into a scale tilde object. A scale tilde object, you tell it what you expect the minimum and the maximum of the input to be. And then you tell it what you want the minimum and the maximum of the output to be. And it will scale the output to that range. Okay. So I'm taking something, a, a typical sine wave, which is between negative 1 and positive 1. And I'm scaling it so it's between 5 and 15. What is that? What, that 5 and 15 range is in, uh, is in uh, it, let's see, uh, is, is for milliseconds, right? Because that's what we're setting the delay time, right? So think about that range where I talked about. I'm, I'm, I'm skirting on the edge between my, um, my, my frequency domain and uh, my, my ambiguity range, okay? So I'm kind of moving back and forth across that barrier, if you will. So if you take this now, and again, you have to first turn up the direct sound and then turn up the feedback and get this thing modulating. Hear the pitch changing? And that's going between 2 and 10. If I start to change that instead to between, I don't know, I'll turn it up to like between 3 and 24. I can also increase the rate, how quickly it's modulating. <coughs> and the spectrogram is lovely at this point. Okay. So this is a modulating comb filter. This is what you use as the basis to produce flange effects and chorus effects. And I've given you some notes here as far as like which ranges are good for flanging and chorusing, OK? Um, so to hear what these do in practice, let me play. Yeah, we're getting some love. So I I've given you the toys to play with, yes, OK? So you can. Play around with these and tweak these. So to hear these in a musical context, okay, I'm going to leave uh, Frankenstein. Uh, I'm going to go to, let's see. Uh, give me, I didn't want to go to full screen. No, what are you doing? Uh, okay, so what do you guys want to hear first, chorusing or flanging? Flanging, okay. Flanging, we go to uh, Life in the Fast Lane by the Eagles. And if we take, everybody know this song? At some point in your lives? Okay. If we jump to about 338, that's.
and then it's gone. Okay, it's the just like the Frankenstein example, it, it's like they drop in these effects just when they need to modulate before the bridge or the recap or the vamp that kind of hides, sends things out basically. They'll drop in the effect for a little bit to kind of, whoa, what's going on? And then they'll snap you back into reality, okay? Um, that's, that's a common way of using it in this kind of uh, late 70s, early 80s rock era, okay? Um, okay, so that's flanging. You want to hear chorusing? Okay. Chorusing, come as you are. We go a little bit later here. Uh, Nirvana, never mind, which is celebrating 25 years this week. So, uh, pretty much the guitar has a chorus effect on it throughout this whole track. Okay, now the bass comes in, is kind of masking it a little bit. But if we jump ahead to 48 seconds. So does that help to hear them kind of in context? Okay, the the flange has a slower rate, so it's kind of it's got these kind of slower sweeps. The chorus usually has a faster rate, so it kind of creates this warbling effect on the pitch. Okay, but the reason it's a pitch effect is because you get those really those peaks in the comb filter, and then you start modulating, which alters the overall pitch perception. Okay, make sense? Does it help to hear them in context? Does it help to get a little bit of math under your belt? Okay, what? Okay. Um, any questions about all that? Well, I'm going to jump back into my slides. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, quick, yeah. Like yeah, it's one. not. Okay, good question. It's not addition or subtraction that makes it feed forward. It's. No. It's this, whether it's a Y, because Y means output. Right. So the fact that the output is being mixed with the input to produce the output means that it's feedback. Oh, right. Got it. Okay? So it's that Y right there that's, that is expressing output. Okay? Good question. Any other questions? Okay. So uh, I will... Admit that I, I peeked at the reading responses last night when there weren't that many of them. But one thing that people were talking about was why are we talking about echoes? Uh, let's see, we've been talking about delays and echoes, but how does that then correspond to artificial reverbs? And I kind of mentioned last time the fact that we we could use comb filters right to build up artificial <coughs> reverbs, right? Okay. Um, and the research on this goes back to uh, uh, a re usually artificial reverbs are traced back to a, a particular paper that was done by um, Manfred Schroeder. Uh, Manfred Schroeder was a researcher at Bell Labs. Bell Labs, you've heard of that before in this class, yes, right? We mentioned Max Matthews being at Bell Labs, right? Okay, a lot of important work happened in Bell Labs, and probably if I if I had to like pick one place or one or two or three places where I had to like, if I wanted to go to a time and place, I would want to go back to Bell Labs in the 50s and 60s basically because there are a lot of cool people there doing interesting stuff and just making interesting work all day. Uh, but Manfred Schroeder wrote this article that was published in the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society, okay, in July 1962 where he talked about this idea of how might we produce an artificial reverb by electronic means, okay. Uh, and he got to this point, so he kind of stepped up to talk to the fact that in a, in a reverb situation, we have over a thousand reflections per second, okay? So we've been dealing with multiples of things. So think about how to build up thousands and thousands of reflections, okay? Uh, his solution was to use, uh, if you're reading the, uh, the, the, sub, uh, the, the caption here that goes along with this uh, diagram, right? Uh, some words should jump out at you, yes? That I've introduced you to before. What words are jumping out at you? Shout them out in the back. Can you guys read the bottom in the back? I'm talking about the bottom. Figure six, caption there. Comb filters, right? <laughs> what now? 
okay, delay, but as well as, uh, remember I, I talked about parallel and series, right? Okay, so what he's, I, I mean, the top, the top might look a little scary to you, but the, the caption at the bottom, you should recognize some of those words there, right? Comb filters, parallel, series, okay? He also makes mention of an all-pass filter, okay? I did my little hand gesture thing, right, with the feed forward and feed back, okay? What happens if you mix a feed forward where the peaks, uh, let's see, if you mix a feed back where the peaks are at the same point as the valley of the feed forward, you get what's called an all-pass filter because the peaks and the valleys overlap with each other and all the frequencies pass through uh, at, at, at their original amplitude, okay? So that, all an all-pass filter is, is a feed forward and a feed back comb filter overlapped on each other, okay? That's what an all-pass filter is. And in fact, I, in my patch, I put kind of in the side, the bottom right, you may have noticed there's an all-pass object that you can use, okay? Uh, why would we want to let all frequencies pass through? Well, it does some interesting things with the phase, okay? Uh, and it messes up the phase timing between the different signals, okay? Um, the phase then feeds into itself, and if you mix an all-pass filter with the original signal, you start to get phase cancellations, which is the basis for a phasor effect, which you may have heard of, okay? So phasor is in the same family as chorusing and flanging. It's just that it's using an all-pass filter instead of a comb filter, okay? But you need to mix. Don't listen. If you, if you try to venture off and create a phasor out of an all-pass filter, don't listen to just the all-pass filter by itself. You need to mix the all-pass filter with its original dry input in order to get the phasing effect, okay? Back to this, okay? These blocks look a little scary, but if I do this, <coughs> does it start to look a little less scary? Because that's effectively what those blocks mean, okay? I'm just covering them up with some max, ob max object names here, okay? So this is a really, really simple max patch, okay? Uh, and if you're interested in creating your own artificial reverbs, with four comb filters and two all-pass filters, now you gotta get the settings right, basically. You can start to re produce artificial reverberation with these in series, okay? His suggestion was four comb filters in parallel and then two all-pass filters in series. All the research that comes after this in 1962, people talk about, well, some people say, well, we should do the all-pass filters first and then go to the comb filters or vice versa, or you know what, we should get rid of all the comb filters because they're just a little too pitchy. We need to stick with all pass filters and mix those up basically. But artificial reverbs, again, those things I mentioned, uh, the, uh, not the ones that deal with impulse responses. The, 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 there, there are filters that actually will take impulse responses of room responses, right? Those are different, okay? But the, the gold verb, the platinum verb, those type of, of, of reverbs that you've, you're familiar with in your DAW, all they are, are are creative combinations of the same comb filters and all-pass filters, okay? And some delays and some low-pass filters shown, thrown in there for good measure, okay? Make sense? That's the connection with all this, these filters that we've been talking about and the artificial reverb, okay? I wanted to at least draw that connection for you because that seemed, the few responses that I saw, that, was, that seemed to be something that people were uh, questioning, like why, how are these connected, okay? Does that help make the connection, okay? Were there other questions from the reading response? You want to get to the Euro rack. You want to get to the Euro rack. Okay. So my my back to my initial question: How can we create that Frankenstein sound that shows up at what was it three fifteen? Should I play it one more time? Because I know people were still filing in. Um, we're going to do that with the Euro rack. So let me get out of this. Let me come back to this. Wow! I remarkably went through that material. Uh, very quickly, I'm, I'm happy with my time frame here. I think we can actually create this. So, uh, not Frank Ocean, Frankenstein. There we go. Frank Ocean's different. And it's at 3.15 is where it is.
So talk me through that sound. What do you think is going on there? What are some elements that you maybe know that you can describe? And what are some things that you maybe are like unknowns that we might need to work through? Solomon. Um, it seems like it passes the high frequencies at first and then transitions to the passing low frequency. Okay, so high frequency to low frequency. Yeah, Christian? Yeah, there's a warble going on there, right? Okay. Uh, and I actually was back and forth on this and experimenting with this. Is that some sort of modulation synthesis going on there, or is it something else? Uh, and my working hypothesis is that it's actually an echo that's creating that. Okay. It's it's actually an echo that's producing that. Okay. That's my working hypothesis, and I. Uh, I, I will admit, I did some experimenting with a max patch to kind of figure out the blend, uh, and I did a little bit of work w when Nico and I were here. Basically, you heard me kind of messing around with the Eurorack, right, to try and get this effect, basically. I'm not suggesting we're going to get this perfect, basically, but, right, we've got this falling frequency, okay, which could be either the frequency of our oscillator or it could be the frequency of our filter, right? But then it's feeding into this that's in time, right? Okay. Uh, and my working hypothesis is that that's actually an echo that's locked into the rhythm of the song, right? Okay. Uh, and so that repetition that we're going to hear is actually the echo uh, being produced from the echo plex, okay? Uh, the echo box, okay? Um, do we need to hear it one more time and get it in our ears? Anthony's nodding his head, okay? So again, just so that we have the target that we're going after. So uh, let me do this. Turn on a quick time. I gotta. First, oh, I have to turn on my camera. New movie recording. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing I did last week, where I put the recording up on the screen so you guys can see in the back. If you wanna come forward, um, feel free to do that. You've got the max patch to lay, play with for later, but right now let's do some euro racking. Um, so I've got this here. Okay. So, um, get that off the screen because that was on there before. Okay. So, uh, and then I'm also going to, because last time on the recording it didn't quite pick up the sound of the Eurorack because it's coming through the speakers and the room and everything like that. Uh, so I'm going to try to capture a little bit off the board here. I don't know if that'll work though. Okay. So, we know we need to start with the oscillator, right? Okay, and we need the oscillator to be, let me turn that down, okay? So if I just plug in the oscillator first, turn down the volume, okay? I'm coming off of the, the synthesizer box, which is where my oscillator is, okay? Uh, and if you need to come forward to see stuff, come forward to see stuff, feel free to do that, okay? Uh, um, uh, I've got the saw blade out, okay? And I'm gonna plug that in just to my output. I should be able to then turn this up. Okay. So my frequency change, I can I start high, right? Let's just turn it to knob, right? Okay. But it's not quite, it doesn't have the kind of timbral change, right, that we had here at the like pointer example, right? Okay. So Timbre means that we're going to have to go over to the filter, which is what we covered last week, okay? So down here, we've got two filters we can work with. Um, I don't know. Let me start with one. Or I'll plug in a second one. Okay. Um, I don't know. Should we go with high pass? Because it seemed like it started high and then got darker, right? Agreed? Okay. So I'm going to start with the high pass filter coming out of here. It seems like I'm... Lower on the screen than I was last time. You know, you scoot back. There we are. Is that better? Okay. High pass here. Okay. Patch that into my output. So now, if I take my frequency, and maybe it's some sort of combination of these two things. But 
you see how I, I can get the timbral shift here with the filter. And I can also get the frequency change here. Yeah, Christian. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. He's on to something here. Okay. Uh, so, how do we create that tremolo effect then? That's that's back to modulation synthesis, right? Okay. Uh, and so the synthesizer box actually has up here. There's two knobs that control an LFO. Okay. So we can actually increase. Okay. You hear the warbling that we're creating now. Okay, the top knob is for the depth of the modulation, the bottom knob is for the, the rate. Okay, so it's these two knobs right here on the synthesizer box, okay. Uh, that modulates, that LFO modulates whatever waveform you're using. I happen to be using the saw blade right now, but if I were to switch over to the triangle or switch over to the, what are the other ones? Uh, the square, okay, it'll modulate those as well. And maybe we'll try those other timbres later, but for right now I'm going to stick with the saw blade. So maybe, okay, I, here I'll start to get in that zone where I'm altering the pitch now. That's the side band moving, okay. I don't know if I want to go quite there. So now we've got that kind of warbling effect, okay? So we can add in then. Quite sure that high pass filter is doing us any favors. Let me try it without that. At least we have we have two different places we can change we can alter the pitch and make it lower, right? We can change the frequency here, or we can change the frequency on the on the filter. Okay. Um, let me try the bandpass real quick. Uh, where's the resonance at? Pass. Oh, because I'm turning. Uh -huh. That's why. I've been changing the resonance knob, so I'm looking at it upside down. Okay, sorry. Resonance is all the way up now. Okay, so let's try the frequency. So that's actually sweeping up. So if we now. So now, now that I've got my bearings right. I got a pretty good handle on my falling pitch effect, right? Okay, these two knobs that I can turn. Okay, so now, so take the output, so I've got the output from the synthesizer box going into the filter, okay? From the filter, then I'm just going straight to the output, okay? Now I'm gonna take the output, I'm gonna go to this echo module here, okay? So the echo module gives us the ability to put this in here, and then if I take the output, Okay, so now if I turn the frequency down. It sounds like we might need a longer repeating time, right? So, let's see, that should be the rate.
still feel like, I, I feel like the, the waveform needs to be a little bit more pulsing, choppy, basically, in order to the effect I'm after. Let's see. Feedback's all the way up, or is it all the way down, maybe? Hearing the second the mix up. Yeah, I'm not hearing the second waveform on the echo. That's like I was just a few minutes before. So Echo seems to be failing me here. Should we try the reverb? Because right next door to the Echo, we have a reverb unit. So let me pull this out, plug this in here. Well, it was like creating that pulse, basically. I think the, I think the echo and the the, uh, the 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 LFO were kind of in time with each other. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not hearing a tremolo effect here. Maybe if I slow it down. That's definitely in the frequency range. So let me get to the. I've got the reverb here. I'm going to feedback. Whole thing that's being okay. So again, I may not have hit the target, but I'm stuff making some interesting sound. I think that's I think that's Turn down to hear your question. Try it with the square wave. Okay. Yeah, it sounds. That thing is down. Oh, that sounds better. That then was turned up. That might have been part of it. Christian wants to square away. Oh no? Like if you slip like a slip with the the Okay. I'm all the way down on my previous map with the hell of all. almost out of time, so if someone wants to come up here and play with it for a few minutes before I have to leave, or if I could leave you with it and then you take it back to the studio if anybody wants to, to, to work with this. Again, we may not have hit the target, but we've certainly created some interesting effects out of this thing. These, again, falling timbers, then being feeding into the echo and repeating over and over again can create this effect, this warbling effect, okay? That's kind of what I was going after. 
Uh, just to remind you folks, as you're walking out the door here, right? Um, we do have your project, okay? Uh, this Monday and Tuesday that's mentioned as being optional drafts, come by my office and share your progress and get feedback. That's this coming Monday and Tuesday, okay? But by next Friday, it's a required draft, okay? So make sure you have something done. The draft is of the composition, not the paragraph, okay? I, I had to clarify that for somebody, okay? Uh, I don't want typewritten notes as far as what you're doing. I want to hear what you're doing, okay? So, okay, uh, I will see you all next week. Yeah. If you want to do a draft video recording, that's fine too. Yeah, I want a draft recording of the project, okay? That's either way, yeah.